Checklist and Selection Box and Dropdown List. The checklist and selection box component is used to toggle the values of specified word addresses. By selecting the value corresponding to the state index in the checklist and selection box, the value of the specified word address switches to the value associated with that state. The checklist and selection box is displayed in the form of a list box in HMI. Similarly, the drop-down list is used to change the value of a specified word address. By selecting a value corresponding to the state index in the drop-down list, the value of the specified word address will be switched to the value of the corresponding state. The drop-down list is displayed as a drop-down box in the HMI screen. To create a new checklist and selection box or drop-down list component, follow these steps. First, select Component Toggle Switch and Menu Checklist and Selection Box and Dropdown List from the menu bar and edit the relevant parameters in the pop-up dialog box. You can choose between different types, such as List and Checkbox or Dropdown List. The Browse method can be set to either Slide, which allows you to slide the screen to view the component content, applicable to capacitive HMIs, or Scroll Bar, where you use the scroll bar to browse the content of the component and set its width. The data source can be configured to use component settings, data sampling, authorized usernames, component customize selector, alarm and event time, or recipe group name. Component. Settings. This allows you to customize the data and behavior of the component. You can set various properties such as the appearance, data source, and interaction methods to tailor the component to your specific needs. Authorized usernames. This refers to the user privilege information. It allows you to set and manage the access levels of different users. For detailed information, you can refer to the user privilege section in your documentation. Data sampling. This involves collecting data at regular intervals to monitor and analyze trends over time. It is useful for tracking performance metrics and identifying patterns. For more detailed information, refer to the data sampling section in your documentation. Component. Customize selector. This allows you to define custom data for selectors within the component. You can set parameters such as item count, selected color, background color, border color, index, value, label content, and more to customize the selector's appearance and behavior. Alarm and event time. This feature logs alarms and events along with their timestamps. It helps in tracking when specific alarms or events occur, which is crucial for troubleshooting and maintaining system integrity. For more detailed information, refer to the alarm and event section in your documentation. Recipe group. Name. This refers to the data related to recipes, which are predefined sets of parameters or instructions used in automated processes. Recipes can be used to quickly configure a system for different tasks or products. For more detailed information, refer to the recipe section in your documentation. When using different read-write addresses, you can specify that the value of the reading address will be written into the writing address upon an action, such as press. The address types LW, RW, SRW, and SRWR correspond to different types of registers and memory locations. LW is a local word, RW is a remote word, SRW is a system register word, and SRWR is a system register word read. Additionally, you can configure the system register, occupy one word, and data type, such as 16-bit unsigned, 32-bit signed, etc. Next, in the Graphics tab, you can choose any type of graphics for the component to enhance its visual appeal. In the Selector Setting tab, configure the relevant parameters. Set the item count to determine the number of component data items. You can customize the selected color to highlight selected items and set the background and border colors. The index value corresponds to different states, and the value specifies the word addresses in those states. Label content can be customized for different states and languages. For illegal input, you can choose to display an error state or keep the current state. 
Error notification can be set to turn on a notification bit address when an error occurs. Language settings allow you to specify the current display language and whether the content changes with the language. Enable control address specifies if the value in that state is enabled or disabled based on the bit value of the word address. You can also use text from a specified text library. In the Control Settings tab, you can set activation settings such as Always Effective or Conditional Effective. For conditional settings, you can configure options like indicating invalid mark, hiding when conditions are not met, making the component non-operable when hidden, displaying in grayscale when conditions are not met, invalidating keyboard focus, and setting level user, privilege user, and logic control. In the Keyboard tab, you can add keyboard settings such as selecting F1, F2, F3, etc. In the Security Settings tab, you can configure security settings such as minimum press time, require confirmation prior to execution, waiting time, minimum operation interval, and notification settings. Notification settings include options for before writing, notify bit address, notify word address, trigger macro, and after writing. You can also select audio from the audio library and configure keyboard focus settings. In the communication tab, you can choose either always communication or conditional communication. For conditional communication, you can set level user, privilege user, and logic control. Finally, in the display tab, you can set the position, X, Y, and width of the component, and choose to lock the width. Click OK, and then click anywhere in the window to insert the checklist and selection box component. By configuring the appropriate parameters for our checklist, selection box, and drop-down list components, we can achieve the desired output effectively. Here is a basic example of how you can run your program.